I used to do it in the old days and stay away from all that processed food and, and all this fruit and vegetables with pesticides. And radiated and radiated all that, you know. I could you know, I could totally see myself someday having a farm. <laughs> you know, in the mountains and like you know. Well the way it's going, uh plan on it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, my grandfather, he went, he went from uh, Tacoa area on Saturdays, um, I packed up the horses the night before, or right. the vegetables, right. and I hiked it up to the, uh, on Saturday, up to the farmer's market to sell, to sell his produce. Oh, yeah. You can probably do something like that. Yeah, sell my own vegetables, right. And then people... No, 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 just make them and then you can drive them down, you don't have to hook up a, a buggy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I could just put them in the Jeep Grand Cherokee now. <laughs> you were talking about different styles of cooking. You know, I remember when I was in uh, anyway, college, I, I went back to the parents' place, and there was a fellow that approached me, and he'd asked me a question about the Seattle Center, and then lo and behold, he was, that fellow was, fellow was the one that was meeting my father, and my father happened to be there, so I got a ride, too. <laughs> it was a good deal. Uh, anyway, so got back there, and he said, no, I'm going to fix uh, something. What do you have in, you know, in the uh, kitchen to fix? And my mother said, oh, oh uh, just some chicken. And he go, okay, now well, where's your spices? And, yeah. and he got busy, and he totally tastes so totally different. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just amazing how, just, you know, different spices, different way of doing it. Yeah. Oh, what a difference. You can, yeah, you can, um, you can, you can put different stuff together. The other day, I was making some chicken, and I was looking what I had in the fridge and what I was, and so I just took some chicken, threw a little salt and pepper, some onions, and then I put some balsamic vinegar in there, and then this is the part that really put me over the top with it. As I looked in the refrigerator, and I was like, I saw a peach, and I was like, well, maybe I, that'll work. Maybe it doesn't. It wouldn't traditionally a peach, a peach work. On the chicken? I took peach and I diced it up. I took the skin off, I diced it up, and put it in at the, at the end, mm -hmm. and mixed it in, and just cooked it for a little bit, to ice because I liked it still firm. Yes. And uh, it was a nice blend of uh, uh, savory, sweet. It was on some Iron Chef stuff. Like, if I did that on Iron Chef, I'm telling you, uh, that one right there, that might be the one that, that you know, yes. the judges will be, hey, yeah. you know, cause, because that's what cooking is, is, not being restricted, you got to be able to go outside of the box. Mm -hmm. That's why it's unlimited. It's mm -hmm. unlimited, just like music. Nobody will ever come up with all the music oh, and learn it. No it's, it's just going to keep being uh, new music, and uh, there's going to keep being new recipes. Oh, I didn't tell you that he was straight from Pakistan. Is there a anyway, he was a Pakistani. Two Fs and Chef or one? One. And so it was Pakistani food. Yeah. Oh, oh, was oh, he's from Pakistan? The yeah. guy. Oh. Yeah, they been dull. Was his name? Oh, I bet that was good, dude. Yeah, it was. It was very good. That was really good, I bet. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to experiment with I haven't uh, experimented with Pakistani recipes so much. Uh, but I, I I every time I meet people from like a different culture or something like that, I always I like I'll, I'll ask them like I met I went to a Moroccan restaurant here and I was like, "Why do you make this?" And he told me the recipe. And I was like, "Okay, I got it." Like in the Longford area on 45th? No, not that place, a place uh Downtown or in Belltown, yeah, Wallingford area, 45th Avenue. Yeah. So there's, there's there a Moroccan restaurant up there. Thanks. Well, yeah. I'm not sure what's happening. Yeah. <clears throat> probably got one up there. But okay. Okay. We're uh, ready. We're about to start here. We're gonna get something going. Uh, I've got a series of things that you wrote down here. Info about Thug and Chef. Uh, Thug and Chef. Private catering available. Info about the fucking chef. Real name, Darian. Lived in Tokyo for four years and uh, speaks Japanese. And yeah. Yeah. Institute of Seattle Honors graduate on top of it. Dean's List, academic uh, distinction. My goodness. And uh, we're really honored to have you here today, Darian. Uh, and Pat, it's good to see you. Patricia Johnson at home. It's good to see you. We've got the fucking chef dot com here today. Darian, it's good to see you. Hey, thank you. I'm, I, I'm honored to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Most definitely. Thanks for having me down. Yeah. Um, a lot of information that uh, I can't believe. My goodness, a thugging chef right here. Uh, do we have the website in the background? That is it, isn't it? Yep. Right there. 
That's your website. That's my website, thebeggingchef.com. Yeah. You can check me out, yeah. And definitely. Yeah. As far as catering is concerned, uh, we can get catering on any kind of food possible, mm -hmm. right? Right. Any kind of food. Mm -hmm. Just, you, oh, you can get it all. You can get anything you want. Any kind of food, any dish you can think of, I can cater it. <laughs> Most yeah. definitely. And so, what, what's uh, one of your specialties? Um, I would say uh, I'm good at Italian food. I'm really good at Italian food. I like making uh, spaghetti, bolognese. Um, uh, I I just uh, like I said I, I I know my mother's sauces, so I can pretty much take a tomato sauce and you know do my thing with it. Hey, I can make it with chicken, pork, braises. Oh, asabuco. I like asabuco, lamb shanks. Is that uh, well, with like me, it. anything with lamb is tasty. Oh, yeah. I like lamb. I love lamb. Well, it's a soft, sweet meat. <laughs> yes, it is. And um, it, especially if it's cooked properly. Now, a trick, a little tip that I do is I soak the lamb, like my lamb shanks, in some vinegar water. And not only does it help to tenderize them a little bit and uh, break down the, uh, the, uh, the connective tissues, it also takes out some of that gamey flavor because sometimes you'll eat lamb and it, it's a little bit too musty tasting. Yeah. But so you soak it in some vinegar water. Oh. Well, what, what uh, ratios do you use on the vinegar water? Uh, just to, you know, just to sort of cover them up in water completely and only put like about a half a cup of vinegar or something like that in there. It depends on how many lamb shanks you're doing. You know. So if I get into it, though, uh, definitely. Darian, real quick, a lamb shake to me sounds kind of like a Vanilla milkshake or something like that. Oh, yeah? Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, maybe somebody make a lamb shake vanilla milkshake sometime. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that might be good. Hey, I just made some chicken with peaches. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Who knows? Well, that actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, as far as what I'm thinking is, uh, we've got events coming up here in Seattle, including right. there are probably events here with Scan TV. Seattle Community Access Network, where we're at. Right. And you also produce here at SCAN. Seattle Community I do. I do, do produce. Yes. I yes. produce the SCAN. I'm working on a film right now. I'm right now editing it and uh, getting that together and um, working on my project, uh, also the Thug and Chef, doing that. Now, is, is uh, in the background, is that one of your YouTubes right there? And yes, it is. That is. That is one of the YouTubes. You're stuff. kidding. It is, and uh, right there I'm making a roux, and I'm going to add some cream in there, and some sharp cheddar cheese, maybe a little Monterey Jack, you know, uh, you can use any kind of cheese you want, but uh, that's the one thing that, it's a good, like I like to make, I like a roux, and my macaroni and cheese, and my pasta dishes with cheese, especially baked, but you can do it on top of the stove, and, uh, or you can do it in the oven. But you make your roux, and then you put in the cream, and voila. You know, this never really? should be washed if you're hungry. You should always yeah. have something to eat before you take a look at it. Yeah, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, because I'm going to go back to my house right after we eat, we get done here. Uh, and I'm going to eat up anything that's left over. Oh, it, it, it affects you too, huh? It does. Okay, so. It does. <laughs> Most definitely. Awesome. Now, as far as uh, taking lessons, uh, you must teach. I do. I, I do. Yeah. I'm Serve Safe certified, so I teach. I, I teach children's uh, classes. I, I helped out. There's a uh, there's an art center out in West Seattle, and um, I had a few teenagers come down, and we, we did a a uh, I taught them. Uh, what, what location? What, what, do you have to know the address? It was on Del Ridge. It's an art center on Del Ridge. I can't remember the name right offhand, but I had a blast with those kids. And uh, because that, that is, to me, is what's important is uh, showing the kids. Because sometimes adults can be a little stubborn and <laughs> set in their ways, you know. But the kids are all open for it. Well, what age group? Well, this age group was like they were teenagers, so they were a little stubborn too, actually. But <laughs> but they were still. They were they they wanted to see it. They got into it, and hey, maybe I maybe I touched some of them in a way to where they would want to be chefs someday. Did they eat their food after they? <laughs> uh, 